What's up everybody, Michael Silva here to do some technical analysis on the financial markets. What a bloodbath today, really putting to the test the buy the dip mentality and the stocks only go up mantra. In today's video, we're gonna be going over the S&P 500. We're gonna be looking at that index, the SPX, on multiple time frames. We're gonna look at the VIX, the NDX, which is the NASDAQ 100, the Dow Jones, the Russell 2000, the dollar, the bond, Bitcoin, gold, and silver. I'm gonna be covering it all. I'm gonna be mapping out some support, resistance, if you should be worried right now, or if this is just a subtle pullback to eventually more highs. Let's dive into today's episode. Welcome, welcome back. We are here looking at the S&P 500. I got timestamps down below if you wanna to go to certain areas. I'm looking at the monthly time frame. not gonna spend much time here on the monthly time frame. However, what I wanna point out here is just this monster run up and then this candle right here for September, this red one. And I want you to pay attention to where it's at. So one, we broke through this megaphone pattern that we've been tracing back. We have it acting as resistance all the way till 2012. Clearly it held as resistance again, but the candle variation right here. Now, if you remember last week's on the weekly time frame, which I'll go over here in a second, we were talking about the dark cloud variation and that's a reversal type pattern. And then we talked on the daily time frame about the hammer candle, hence the title in the previous video, bulls have the hammer. So on the monthly time frame, I wanna cover this. This right here is a Western outside trading candle. Now it has to complete below this green candle in order to be considered a Western outside trading candle. And this right here is a reversal type pattern as well. And this is looking at it on a monthly time frame. So we got to monitor this one very closely. It's still disconnected from this red line. That's the five EMA. And the five EMA is one of those kind of, um, exponential moving averages that the price action really hits frequently. And if it extends too far past it, you typically see some sort of reconnect. So if we get this to pull back to that five EMA and it either close below it um, for the end of the month, which, you know, there's a lot of time left in the month. Next, next week is OPEX. So, and typically that's a, that's bullish. So we got to monitor it, see how it goes, see how it closes. So we'll keep an eye on the monthly time frame, but know that that's a pretty brutal thing going into the elections and October and September, which are historically not the greatest um, trading months as far as um, the longs positions go. Typically during election years, which you can look at a seasonality chart, in September, what you typically see is a little bit of a pullback, which we're seeing, but you also see some run-ups too as well. And then October, you really see some volatility pick up. But this is what I wanted to show out right here on the Western, um, this Western outside candle that's kind of forming, very bearish looking so far. Let's go to the weekly time frame. So here is the weekly time frame on the SPX, the S&P 500 index. This right here was the dark cloud variation that we said, hey, um, this this is this is somewhat of a reversal type pattern and we had continuation to the downside the s p 500 today closed 95 points lower that's 2.78 percent lower and it pretty much gapped down on the open and then just ran down a lot of selling pressure pressure all the way down to 3330. let's move to the daily time frame because i want to cover that in a little bit more depth all right so here is the daily time frame for the S&P 500. Big pullback, all right? So what's going on these last three trading days? Let's go ahead and measure just how big of a pullback this actually is. We came from a high of um, 35.88. I'm just rounding right there. And now we are down about 7.22%. So about 259 points lower, okay? 259 points lower in just three trading days. Now, this was the hammer candle that we're talking about. The bulls have the hammer. That didn't really do much for them. And today's candle, we saw some really, some a lot of se uh, selling pressure happen towards the end of the day. Now, where is my target for a potentially um, by the dip scenario? In order to see that, I'm gonna bring up the Bollinger Bands, keeping this very simple here. So the Bollinger Bands, we were getting overextended and now we're seeing the snap back to the bottom area. So when you really take a look at this, let's zoom in here. When you take a look at this, what do you see taking place? What I see is some really strong selling pressure in overall bullish context, and it's coming into a pretty massive area of support. What are those areas? Well, first, it's gonna be the lower Bollinger Band 
and the 50 period moving average. And that puts us right at around 3,300. 3,300 to me looks like it might be a very strong area for support. Let me pull up the Fibonacci retracement level just to see where that lines up with this area. So here's the Fibonacci. I'm gonna go from the March low to the high right here, the all time high. And what we see happening is a pullback to this 3260 level. 3260 represents the 0.236. So it's coming into a big area of support. We have the Bollinger Band right there and the 50 period moving average. I wouldn't be surprised to see some sort of a bounce and go from that level and I don't know if that would be a bounce to make all-time highs or if that would be potentially a dead cat bounce to move lower into a lower range, which would be more around this 3,056, the 200 period moving average, this kind of zone within this channel here. That to me would make sense and I would like to see it come into this range for potentially a long position as well. If it does continue down to this range, what we might be potentially seeing is overall a larger head and shoulders pattern taking place here on the daily time frame where it goes like this and then we might see another shoulder like so and then have a neckline below 3056 or 3000 right there in that range now that's a little bit longer term forecast but what you do need to pay attention to is that there's a lot of selling pressure overall bull context and we're running into some massive areas of support so don't be shocked or surprised to start seeing some buyers step in right around these levels. Let's go take a look at what the VIX is doing. Interesting day for the VIX. We've been monitoring this falling wedge bullish type pattern breakout. Our target was around 40 to 45, almost reached it at around 38. And today's trading day, we're up 2.3%, but very interesting type of candle. We're, yes, we finished positive, but we were technically a lot higher. And very interestingly enough, I mean, they do have inverse correlation. So when you see the S&P 500 go down, you should see the VIX go up. Now, if we get more selling pressure to the downside, we very well might reach up to our target area of 40 to 45. However, we've been monitoring this gap right below us to fill that gap, it'd be 18.1. And that's why we've been kind of saying, hey, if we come in to fill that gap, that's where we might see this pullback take place in the S&P 500 and then bounce from those levels to make all-time highs. And as we spoke about the seasonality of um, the elections within the S&P 500, typically you do see pullbacks in Septembers, but you also can see run-ups towards the end of the month as well. So got to keep an eye on this gap, monitor it closely. Target is still remains 40 to 45 on the VIX. Let's go ahead and take a look at the NASDAQ 100. All right, so here is the NASDAQ 100. We are monitoring this lower trend line and obviously it has been trading within this upwards channel, which we once called a rising wedge, but because of the big blow off here up to a high of basically 12, 12,500, 12,450, right around there. That really made it into a channel and not quite a rising wedge. Besides the point, what do we got going on right now? Well, first off, it broke recently out of this channel and closed significantly below this channel. The, the prior trading day came all the way down and we saw this big bounce up. Now this is on the daily time frame. When we went to the weekly time frame, we discussed on the weekly time frame that this right here is a what's known as a bearish engulfing or even an outside um, trading day, a Western outside trading day. And the reason why it's a Western outside trading day is the entire candle wick from here cleared it to down here, but then also a bearish engulfing, which are very similar patterns. They're darn near the same. The bearish engulfing a, a little bit of a gap up and then cleared the entire body of the previous week. This is a reversal pattern given the context of the chart when it's on this big ramp up. Now, what took place today to begin the week? Well, we had a pretty large gap down. We had some momentum pushing to the upside, but ultimately came back down. And where we're at right now, let's go back to the daily time frame. So where we're at right now is this inverted hammer candle on the 50 period moving average. Now, inverted hammer candles, given the context of where it's at, is still a potential reversal candle. So one, it could be um, a regular hammer candle on a big pullback, or it could be an inverted like this. And the reason why this is still could technically be a um, reversal type looking candle is because intraday trading showed that the bulls really stepped some momentum 
up throughout the day, which probably scared more of the short sellers. Um, overall, still pretty bearish for the day, but it's in, like I said, bullish context, but broke out of that channel. So couple things for the bulls, couple things for the bears, more in the bearish direction at this particular point in time. But let's go ahead and pull up the Fibonacci levels just so I can show you a couple more things to maybe help clear this up. And while I'm pulling this up, the McClellan oscillator down there below is printing a rather deep, steep negative number. We're at minus 66. I think the prior day was at minus 43. So a big negative breath in the market. Now we recently closed below the 0.236 FIB retracement level, which is right by the 50 period. So this downwards pressure might continue down or we might see some maybe um, buying in the futures market to potentially offer up some sort of a bounce, maybe a dead cat bounce, maybe just a recovery. We will see. But right now, that right there, close below it onto the 50 period. There's a lot of support right there. But ultimately, this breakdown of the pattern would suggest that if we do get a continuation to the downside, that 0.382 would offer up a very nice support to buy the dip. Let me throw up the Bollinger Bands now. Now the mark chart's getting a little bit um, cluttered, but the reason why I wanna bring up the Bollinger Bands here is because we're getting this steep pullback into the 50, into the Bollinger Band, the lower Bollinger Band, and this type of stuff does happen on these kind of elastic rubber band type moves. So big areas of support here, and then our next level of support is just a little bit lower at 10,279. I would imagine from this point, if we get a continuation, we'll be seeing some sort of bounces from this level. Clearly today we did open up right here at the 0.236 level and we saw some pushing to the upside. So this level, that's why this could be potentially scaring the bears just a little bit and given its context, could be a potential reversal type candle. That's just to keep in mind now, we gotta watch the futures market, a little bit overnight session, see where we open up tomorrow and then we could kind of get a better glimpse as to what might be taking place. If we get a gap down, below the 50 period on this daily. Yeah, I might see some continuation to the downside and my, my main target would be that 10, um, 10.279, which is the 0.382 FIB level. And these type of elastic type moves where it just kind of just gets stretched out super far, which we saw on this big run up for quite some time now, this is what happens. So we had three trading days that wiped out really a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 trading days. So you take the stairs up, even though that was a, a very steep staircase, you definitely took the elevator down here. If we break past the 0.38 FIB level, I would say come all the way down to the 50% retracement level or just above that where the all-time record high was in February, February um, 19th before the big market sell-off. Will the Fed continue to let this market drop? Will there be more systematic type selling take place? Well, we're going to have to wait, going to have to see. But if we do get these... Um, continuation of sellers, we gotta look for these areas of support to buy into for trading. Now, those are the levels to keep an eye on for the NASDAQ 100. Let's go ahead now and go check out the Dow Jones. This right here is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We have just broken now out of this rising wedge pattern. So, I think the next area, the support, if we get a continuation to the downside is going to be at 27,000 right there, maybe just a little bit higher to that level. And when I did the Fibonacci retracement tool, I did it from the top to the bottom, but if I do it from the bottom to the top here, we can look at the 0.236 at 26,609, so $400 less than that. And clearly when we look at it like this, either way, I mean, it's within striking distance, but when we look at it like this, how I did on the NASDAQ, you can see that when it did up here in June get above it, it couldn't test that level. It had to gap above it, get rejected, and then gap below it. So it didn't act as support or resistance there. We just cleared it, and then it acted as resistance multiple times um, throughout this level right here. So 26,600 to 27 will be that area of support to watch this break down from. If we start a continuation to the downside, 25,000 will be that next 
level. This fall, this rising wedge pattern is a bearish type pattern, especially when we're starting to get the breakdown below it. So we're gonna have to monitor this one daily as well. The next thing that I wanted to point out here on the Dow Jones is the Bollinger Bands. We're getting that kind of overextended move and now it's snapping back to the lower portion of the Bollinger Bands. And then when I pair that with the 50 period moving average, it's moving into that level of support right here. And then also the Bollinger Bands, this zone right here will be of just a good level of support to buy into if you're looking to buy the dip always 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 have stop losses in place just in case we get the continuation to the downside now let's go ahead and hop over to the russell 2000 so this right here is the russell 2000 and we're getting some momentum obviously to the downside as well and it clearly didn't have as bad of a day as the other indexes here this was only down two percent um, the NASDAQ was down 4.7%. The S&P was down just over like mid 2%. So not as bad of a day here for the small caps, but also it hasn't had the run up that these other indexes had as well. When we map out support here, we're looking at this 1456 level as a level of support. We brought out the Fibonacci retracement tool. It pops right down there at 0.236, so 1452. This would make for a good bounce trade right there. If you pull back, you want to buy in, then you can have a tight stop loss. That would make sense to me. And if you get stopped out, I'd be looking at the next level below. Let's go ahead and now look at the dollar, which surprisingly today had a breakout moment of a very key level. Here is the dollar chart and the daily time frame that we've been monitoring. And we've been monitoring this down channel right here. And what do you know? It looked like it was basing out, as we mentioned in previous videos kind of basing out, look like it potentially might get ready for that breakout moment. And boom, right here today, we had the breakout very, very bullish day on this breakout. Just a solid green candle right here, complete shaved head. There's pretty much no upper wick to this. So uh, is this the start of something bigger? It very well may be a start of maybe a more of a move to the upside. However, we still have resistance, right? We still have a lot of downwards pressure taking place and we're coming into this neckline of that head and shoulders that we talked about. So we might get rejected, we might get tested, we might eventually go up. So watch for the dollar to see where it goes because the higher it goes, it could put more pressure onto the S&P 500, the, the NDX, the Dow Jones, the Russell 2000 all struggled today during the trading session. Let's go take a look at the 10-year bond to see what's going on there. Another volatile day for the 10-year bond, down 6%. Now, the previous trading day, we were up 12.7%, so we're still up um, within the last two trading days. However, there's just a lot of back and forth action right now taking place from this breakout of this lower trend line. We broke out, kind of went down, we went up, we're back down to this 0 0.60 level of an area of support that we we're measuring. And now we bounced from that point and we're kind of getting the pullback. So just a lot of kind of shaky hands right here. Going to have to monitor it closely. Ultimately, I, I do think that the, I mean, the 10 year is just going to be continuing to go lower, but I, I still think it has some legs to go higher before it goes lower. We'll see. Um, the next, my kind of target area on this breakout here is um, right around basically 0.9 to 1.0, right, right there in that range, I can see where this price might go to, but uh, we're going to have to monitor this one day by day. Not much action, just a lot of volatility and sideways movement might be gearing up for a bigger move here in the near future. Um, let's go now take a look at gold and silver. All right, so here is gold. And uh, really, we've just been kind of monitoring these stair-step action. It looks like a symmetrical pattern. If I were to draw out some trend lines, this 1921 level is holding. It actually was down here trading below it intraday, but the bulls stepped up. So we still didn't get that close below it to make me think that the price is going to head lower. So the stair steps down here making these new um, lower highs has me a little bit worried at this particular point in time. So it's not, I personally wouldn't be buying into gold at this particular moment. It looks to me like it wants to break down. However, that doesn't necessarily mean it will. If it starts breaking up and making a higher high and then it continues this higher lows right here in the near future, gold could eventually break out of that symmetrical triangle and then continue to move itself 
higher. However, we are just pushing a fine line right here at basically 1920 to as low as I'd say, uh, you know, 1900, 1905. And then this one candle got really far down there at 1864. But that was kind of a rubber band extension. And that kind of stuff happens. More of the support to me is right here at about 1905. So 1900, 1905. So if we start closing a daily close below that level, then I'd say watch out. We're going to be heading to about 1815 most likely. Let's go ahead and take a look at silver. All right, so here is silver, and today we broke down through this symmetrical triangle, but the bull stepped up at this level of support, pushed the price higher back into this symmetrical triangle, right just basically below it. So it's going to be interesting to see if we see continuation to the downside or if we break up within this symmetrical triangle. So we might very well see potentially a bounce and consolidate more coil up tightly in this symmetrical triangle before either breaking down or breaking down out. Main support, as per, as I said in the previous video, is this 2619. Keeping an eye there. If we get a breakdown past that, the next level that I'll be looking at is about 2326 right down there. So let's go ahead now and take a look at Bitcoin. Here's Bitcoin on the daily time frame. And if you follow me on Twitter, I posted actually a 30 minute chart on a reply. It basically showing these just gigantic stair steps down through trading. And I said it'd be probably trading under 10,000 very shortly if we can't make a new high. And what I meant by that is if I went to the 30 minute time frame right now, or I'll just go on the hour time frame. What we saw here is we see these levels kind of just these stairs just dropping off basically, boom. So we just have these lower levels just boom, failed bounce, failed bounce, failed bounce, failed bounce to make a new high. So if it fails to make a new high or a higher high and then the lows maybe you know are continuing to build, they look like they're trying to build, but they're so close to each other, it's kind of just the, 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 the bears pressing that 10,000 level closer and closer while the bulls try to make a bounce. They try to make it higher, but have just been failing to do so. On the hour, on the daily time frame, what I showed you or what I wanted to show you was the pattern is simply just a bear flag. So right now it is just a big pull to the downside and now it's treading sideways like so. So a bear flag, I would say watch out for a break lower on this. It looks like it wants to head lower. And then that next level of support that you might want to monitor, 9,500, let me show you why. If I were to draw a line out there as a level of support, and if you look back in the history of the chart, we acted as resistance. When we broke through, we really got, uh, we really just started moving up higher. It bounced multiple times on 9,500 before breaking down and coming back to test as resistance. We had resistance there again, and then resistance here as well. So clearly a strong key level for Bitcoin traders, 9,500. I feel if we break down through 10,000, that next level to potentially buy into the support would be 9,500. If we start getting closes below that, the overall context of this chart, let me put it on the weekly time frame, is a symmetrical triangle. We're building higher lows and lower highs, coiling up tighter and tighter. Now, it's very possible to see this thing continue to break down and just bounce within this. I mentioned that, but we will see. Um, I did read a comment saying you should be looking at this at the log scale. When I put it up as a log scale, it's still technically a um, symmetrical triangle, but I can see why somebody might say that because, I mean, one, it just looks much more bullish on a log scale like so. Um, so if you wanted to monitor it on, a, on, on this type of scale, that's totally fine. But the symmetrical triangle still is holding um, from what I say. So basically we've seen these touch points right here, right here, right here. And then it still looks like it could break down from these levels and come to retest this 6,000 level. Either way, you look at it and coil up tighter and tighter before maybe a break to the upside or to the downside. A break to the upside is very possible and likely. I mean, it is in bullish context overall. So yeah, log scale or even, you know, just the regular uh, linear, which I, I use, still bullish context, right? Bullish context, but it's a symmetrical triangle and we're looking at these trend lines. So if you're a buyer of Bitcoin, I would say probably just hold off until it pulls back to levels of support. And if it pulls through this green, um, these green areas of support, 9,500 to 10,000, I don't, I mean, I just personally don't see why you, why it wouldn't come down lower to 70, 7,500, that type of range to, to retest the low of this channel. But I guess, I guess we'll have to wait and just be patient and see what takes 
place in the near future. That is all I have for you here on the market brief. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, emotional outbreaks, let me know in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions, also leave them in the comment section below. I will see you back here tomorrow.